Maria is timeless. It is through the cycles that we are here on this earth that we hopefully inspire generations ahead of us and live in harmony and peace. Pottery was an everyday occurrence for her. It wasn't something she did every now and then. And she was never without a song. She had this calm sense about her which extended beyond the family. And she was always a generous lady. Lady is the name that she was called by all the Pueblo people and she was called Guillo. Little did we realize that when we were growing up that she was actually a very famous person. With the advent of the Santa Fe Railroad in the 1880s, uh, we s started to see a decline in what we called traditional pottery making, the large um, pots and bowls, um, especially the ollas. And that was because of the introduction of commercially made goods. She instilled in me is to remember, to remember all the things that I see around me, to remember things that I have heard, things that I've seen, things that I have read, and to always be open-minded with people. And I think she was very influential in the arts this way. And Maria really brought back the old traditional um, style of pottery making with the larger pots. And because of what she was doing and the magnificent beauty of, of the pieces she was working with, an art market was really created so I think today we really have to credit Maria for keeping this tradition alive and turning it really into an art form. Maria inspired um, a number of, of young people to continue uh, making pottery, in particular her son and her, her grandchildren. But she, she started out with a collaboration with her husband, Julian. And she was a master at, at making the pots and polishing them. And then Julian would paint the designs on them. When they started uh, making just black pottery, which was already being made in, those, in both Santa Clara and in San Ildefonso, they experimented a little bit, and that's how they came up with this kind of black-on-black -black technique, which is a matte design on a highly polished background. They were one of the first people to travel. They went to um, St. Louis, for their uh, World's Fair. With that, they opened new roads for Native people in that they weren't afraid to travel, that they weren't afraid to interact with different people other than their own. And they were ambassadors from our Pueblo and ambassadors from the Indian world. From the Native American's perspective, you know, it, it led to a better way of living for our Pueblo the artists there could now be able to uh, earn a living from it and they were the n initiators of this particular movement. I think without her, Pottery World would not be where it's at in this modern day and within my own lifetime as well. And with that thought, you know, I just hope that my children continue and their children's children continue because this is the legacy she left for us. What was told to me and I think a lot of other potters um, at this present time is uh, what my great-great-grandmother had stated once is uh, we all come from the clay, the earth, and we all will return to the clay, the earth. So it's up to us to continue and be happy and continue the harmony of what we can express through our hands and minds and heart. And it is through the arts and our ceremonial life that we will live on forever. Hey, hey.